Hey, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to make a video um, talking about what I've been seeing a lot from a lot of new people. I wanted to help them out. So with, with Linux, one of the, the nice things about Linux is they have a file system called BTRFS. It's kind of new, but people have been using it for a really long time. It's, a, it's a stable and it's perfectly good to use on your everyday system. So one of the key features with BTRFS is you can use something called snapshotting. Now, snapshots are essentially uh, a copy of your system in time at a specific point. And uh, it can be reverted or restored and created very quickly. So it's not like, you know, if you had to R sync your information or you had to copy your disk image from one system to another, it's not like, like that. It's not as, as slow as that. It's very quick. So I think it'd be, it should be mandatory that every single distro has this if it's calling itself a newbie distro, in my opinion, um, because it would make it so basically probably I would say um, 80 to 95 percent of all user problems would be gone, or they they would still exist, but you know they wouldn't be a problem to the end user because the end user could just revert and then be like, oh, okay, whatever. That that update didn't work. Something went weird with that update, and so this would cut down a lot of stress for them. And it would stop people like in this Reddit post I'm showing you here. Um, they're saying, you know, I literally have to reinstall Linux after every update. And they're saying just updated Fedora 38 to 40. And of course I can't open Chrome terminal and a bunch of other apps. I don't get it. Why updates always break my system. Tried Ubuntu, Manjaro, Pop! OS, Mint, Fedora. Is something wrong with my config? i7, 7700, HQ, plus 1050Ti. So I already can tell that this person is just hoping some distro that he goes to is going to magically fix all of his issues. And, you know, some distros, they might do better than others at certain things. So... Ubuntu, it is not my first choice for a newbie distro because it does have a lot of gotchas in my opinion. Um, but with that said, it is still a newbie distro and it would still be a good choice for a newbie. And this would still work on Ubuntu, of course. You could still use BTRFS on Manjaro. You could still use BTRFS on Pop! OS. Of course, it's another derivative of Debian or through Ubuntu and Mint. And of course, Fedora is I would say not a great newbie distro just because um, you do have to install a lot of things manually that you don't have to do in other distros. So you, you don't have to mess with drivers with um, any of the other ones, I think. I haven't used Mint in a really long time, but I, I, I think all the other ones on this list up here that this person's talking about except for Fedora um, they all manage the drivers for you for graphics drivers, which is he's going to need with the 1050 Ti. So if you're one of these kinds of users who is trying to get uh, your system running and stable, it doesn't matter which one of these you pick. You're going to run into problems when you do an update be just, just based on the nature of how fast most of them are updating and just because you're new and you're going to read some article from five years ago thinking that you can use it now or, you know, people who are more advanced are writing blog posts about something that they've done and then you go and try it and it breaks something and you don't know how to put the pieces back together. So this is a really common thing. And this is what I wanted to address. BTRFS snapshots can help you. It'll prevent you from distro hopping It'll let you really understand at least how to fix your system if something goes wrong. So this should be base level Linux. I don't know why everybody doesn't include it yet. 
probably going to roll out eventually just because it's so powerful. So when you actually get a BTRFS snapshot set up, the snapshots will have a menu item in Grub. And if you don't know what Grub is, that's that little prompt that shows up most of the time if you're running like a dual system, like you have um, Linux and Windows installed together and you select one of them. Um, or you also have different kernels you can select. That's, that's the Grub menu. So inside that Grub menu, there'll be another menu entry in there for snapshots. So you can select your snapshot from a week ago, a month ago, two months ago, all, all of those things, if, as long as you've taken a snapshot, which can be automatically triggered by your package manager. So if your package manager triggers the snapshot to be created, then you're gonna have all these snapshots in there. And um, <clears throat> inside Grub, they control how much you'll see, like how many menu uh, entries you'll have. Some are capped at five, but you can always change that later if you want to. But basically, this is one of the, the main reasons I've seen so many new people distro hop because they really want Linux to work for them. They really like Linux, but they, they want to test things out. They want to change things. They want to tinker with things. Um, you really need a way to revert your system if something goes wrong. If you make a mistake, the distro um, developers make a mistake, some app goes haywire, you need a way to fix it. So that's what I would address for this address for this person right here. And one of the ways that you can do that is you can use something called BTS, BTRFS convert. So let's say, for example, you have an existing system that's running ext4 file system or three, then you can convert that file system to a BTRFS system. This is a little bit more complicated, but you can definitely do it. You just, you know, have this run at night before you go to bed and then come back in the morning and should be all done. And your system will be a BTRFS system at that point. Now, you might have to know a little bit about FSTAB, which I can show you my FSTAB. And here's mine. So with FSTAB, it has these UUIDs. So these UUIDs are just unique identifiers for the drive and partition. So for my system, I have two unique identifiers right here that are the same UUID, but they have a special, uh, I guess, extra variable that's being defined here called sub volume. And it uses this at symbol. And uh, that, that's basically all you need for your root of your file system is just the at symbol. And because you're gonna create these sub volumes. They're gonna have an at symbol um, and you get to, to label them. So this BTRFS label is what is gonna look for at that point um, that you created. And you can create it with um, software. Like if you use time shift, oh, time shift. I can type my password, right? Okay. So you can create volumes in here. Where is the volumes? Schedule. I swear I don't mess up my password that much. But anyway, you can create sub volumes in different ways. You can create them with um the command line you can administer them in different ways time shift is a little bit simpler as you can see here they don't get into so much detail because time shift is expecting you to have a very specific format and btrfs assistant uses something called snapper which is a little bit different so you have two two different ways you can go i would recommend you know for your first go around just use time shift because it is meant to be easier to use and once you do that and you have these labels set up but as you can see here's a here's a a sub volume and a sub volume you can kind of think of it as like your folder 
for like your home uh, directory. So this is a sub volume specifically for my home directory. And when it goes and does its, its uh, boot process, it's gonna have your home folder, but it's gonna associate it with this sub volume at home. And then that's how it all connects them together. So for your root partition, the reason why you want to have this layout is because this is the layout that works with time shift. So if you just have these two uh, sub volumes, everything will work. So when you do your conversion, you might have to also create these sub volumes later down the road after you do it and then move the files to the root, which is a little bit of a process, which is why you'd want to have this all done automatically when you do the installation. But if you don't have that option, this is definitely doable. It's not something that's insurmountable. You, you can definitely do it. But with some of the BTRFS maintenance stuff that you're going to have to do, um, you're going to want to balance, scrub, and defrag. Now, I know a lot of people who grew up, you know, my time period are going to know about defragging. We used to have to do that all the time. And it's, it's not as slow as it used to be. But, yeah. You still have to do those kinds of things. And I just have mine to set up, uh, set up and run automatically. I don't even think about it. It just happens in the background. I'll leave my computer on at nighttime and it just does it. And you can even set it up to power down your system when it's done or whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, also one other gotcha is you, you need to have a different kind of partition for your swap, but you can't, uh, you can't use like a swap file. So BTRFS doesn't allow you to use a swap file. So you gotta have an actual partition for your swap. Just so if you wanna use Hibernate or any of those types of things, you should pay, pay attention to that. But other than that, as you can see here, here's a bunch of my snapshots. I was doing restoring and I was testing stuff out. I'm on unstable. Manjaro, uh, Manjaro branch, which is basically Arch. Um, and when things come out, I like to test stuff, play around with stuff. So, yep, these are what these are. You can run the wizard. Once you run the wizard, you just select what kind of file type you want to have. And it's just, just like this. You select the location of where your uh, BTRFS snapshot drive's at, and it's going to be the same one as your, your main drive. And then you can also set up different kinds of um, automatic snapshots that get ran. I don't have any of these set up just because I'm using something for my package manager that automatically creates snapshots for me um, every time there's an update. And I think that's sufficient for me. I don't need any more snapshots than that. But if you did have some kind of specific need, you know, you can do that here. And you can also include uh, the home volume for your backups. Now, I, I personally don't do that because I have all of my home directory stuff backed up in another way um, to my NAS. And then that NAS is backed up off site, um, encrypted and then backed up off site. So I think that that works well for me. I would recommend not doing your home directory for those snapshotting just because it can, there's a lot more changes that are happening on your home directory. And uh, I just want this process to be specifically for my, my distro, making sure I always have a, a fallback option. So yeah, I mean, that's basically it for BTRFS. Um, there, there's different ways you can do it. You can do it all through the command line. It's not that hard, really. It is pretty easy to do. The commands aren't that complicated. And there are good guides, like even, you know, Fedora Magazine has done it. They talked about how to set this stuff up. Um, a lot of distros, they have convenience packages, like what I talked about for like, for Manjaro, they have a, a package specifically meant to help you, um, you know, hook into that package update process. So yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll add these links just for anybody who wants to read this stuff. Um, I think this is actually the one that I read when I was learning about it. Um, it's going to save you so much time. It's going to save you so much heartache. Every single time you have an update, every single time you want to install a theme and you're not sure, is this extension or theme or whatever going to break my system? 
you're going to know it doesn't matter. It's fine. I can still run this. Um, but you should know, you know, a snapshot is not going to take the place of backing up your files. Like what I talked about with your home directory, even if you do have a snapshot, if your drive breaks, you're still, you know, up the Creek, you need to make sure you back up your information. So this is, this is not for backup purposes. This is for recovery purposes. In my opinion, you want to be able to recover your system. This is going to help you do it. So if you have ext4 or ext3, you can still do the BTRFS convert and it's it's fairly quick. I think mine, I didn't do it at night. I think mine took like four or five hours and I was converting an eight terabyte drive. So it was a, an eight terabyte NVMe drive. So that's still pretty fast, but it still took a while and it wasn't completely filled. I think it was only like two terabytes worth of information in there. So yeah. And then after I did that, I had to move the files from the root of the BTRFS drive to a sub volume. You might be able to get away with, with going directly to the sub volume. I'm not sure. Um, I, when I did it, I was just kind of learning. So I didn't really get a chance to, uh, to mess with it that much. But if you look into it, you might be able to do it. But you can just copy it right over. It's, it's just like a regular file system once the sub volume is created. You mount it, and then you can just copy the stuff right over to it. Um, yeah, and then you create the home home part uh, sub volume. You move all your home uh, files over there, and then you delete. The, well, you reboot. Make sure everything's working after you change F stab, and then if everything's working, you can delete those old files, and then you do your um, your maintenance. You can either go into BTRFS Assistant, run the scrub, run you know all that stuff. Or you can do it in the command line, um, but just make sure you you do those things afterwards because that's going to clean up your file system and make sure that everything's running as it should. So, yeah, that's my BTRFS announcement, I guess. Helpful video trying to just share information so you know what's available, right? Because not every new person knows that, hey, if I just spend maybe an hour or two setting this up on my existing system or I find a distro that already has it all set up for me already. Like I think OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is one that I know has it set up already right out the box, right when you use it. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Manjaro has added it. I installed Manjaro a long time ago. Um, so I'm not sure if they've, they have it in their installer all, already set up for you or not. But um, if they don't, just... Make sure you double check if you're planning on doing a new installation. Um, but if they don't, you can still do this method. I think it's probably like five or six commands and then editing your F stab and you're done. And maybe running uh, grub updates and stuff like that if you have, um, if you have the UUIDs change and if you have you know, stuff like that. But that should be fairly easy to do. And uh, yeah, you know, share this video with anybody who you think is kind of compulsory and keeps distro hopping or having to reinstall their system. It's much better to just use your system and not have to reinstall it all the time. Um, yeah, you're going to want to be able to, to do that. So yeah, everybody take it easy and uh, I'll catch you later.